A group of college kids just couldn't grow up, especially on Halloween night. They would revert back to their young selves and play silly games. They all got some drinks and went to the local cemetery. They were going to play Ghost in the Graveyard. The rules are simple. Have everyone except for the ghost stand at the home base while the ghost runs off and hides somewhere in the graveyard. Now, the home base players try to find the ghost. Meanwhile, the ghost attempts to jump out and tag players. If someone sees the ghost, they yell, Ghost in the graveyard, and run back to home base. This game was going to be an exciting callback to their fun from their past, and would be a great relief to them now that they were expected to do so much adulting. There was something interesting about the graveyard on this particular night. It felt darker than usual. The moon was bigger tonight, but for some reason, it wasn't brighter. There was a dense fog around the graveyard that was cold when you passed through it. It was a perfect example of what a haunted graveyard should look like. It was perfect for tonight. They picked Robert to be the first ghost. He was fast and would get the game started right. They all went to home base, the grave of a man named Chester Brown. The group was stepping all over his grave, not paying attention to the morality of stepping on a human's grave, but were more concerned with the game above all else. Robert disappeared into the fog, mocking them that he would find them and scare them all. A few minutes went by, giving Robert the time he needed to hide somewhere. When enough time had passed by, Everyone was unleashed into the graveyard. There was a lot of space and great places to hide, so Robert could be anywhere. Sam was all alone and wandering the graveyard, looking everywhere for Robert. He heard something and was convinced he had found Robert. He slowly crept over to the noise and prepared to jump past the tombstone to surprise Robert. He jumped forward and yelled, Ghost in the graveyard! It was Robert, but there was something wrong. Robert was a deformed and terrifying version of himself. His skin was melted, his eyes were blood red and sticking out of his face, and his clothes were ripped. Sam's smile dropped and he took off to home base. He ran as fast as possible, completely terrified. He heard something chasing him and it was right behind him. He got to home base, turned around, and Robert was not there. What the hell was that? Did Robert put on makeup or was it something else? How did he look so convincingly like a terrifying monster? Suddenly, Sam heard multiple footsteps from different directions. From all directions, he saw Kanisha running towards him, then Becky, then Mondeep, and Mike. Everyone was back at home plate, and all had the same terrifying story about Robert's appearance. With either a shared delusion, or something really wrong, they were done with this game, and just wanted to go home. Suddenly, Robert came out of the fog. He looked completely normal. Robert said, I got all of you. He looked at the concern from everybody's face, and asked, what's wrong? They all told him that they saw him out there and he looked like a monster. He laughed it off and said, Look at me. It's just me. Your mind is playing tricks on you. After that, even though Robert tried to reassure the crowd, no one wanted to play anymore. They all walked back to their cars and called it a night. No one could explain how they had a shared mass hysteria. They did. As they were walking towards their cars, Sam looked back at the graveyard. In the distance, he could see a figure watching the group leave, then turning around to head deeper into the graveyard. Everyone loves getting scared at haunted houses, and a group of guys plus one girl, Matt, Will, Keith, and Bethany, were no exception. They were looking for the scariest haunted house they could find and planned on going for Halloween. They have been to all kinds of haunted houses in the country, big and small, looking for the perfect one. But they were never satisfied because they thought 
All these haunted houses weren't very scary. They knew it was fake, and the rush they got when they were kids would just never be fulfilled. As they exited their sixth haunted house of October, a stranger approached them. He asked, How was it? They looked at him with disappointed faces and said, It's fine, but it's the same old thing. He looked excited to hear that because he was about to pitch them an exciting new opportunity. How would you like to go to a real scary haunted house for Halloween? They all looked intrigued. The haunted house he referred to was not open to the public and was only by special invitation. The man said, I know you've been looking for something more exciting than this. Are you interested? They all said yes and exchanged information. They left each other and would soon see each other with the promise of a real haunted house. Halloween was coming up and they all received their official invitation. There was a cryptic message that accompanied the ticket, but they all assumed it was part of the game. They got in the car and put the provided coordinates into the GPS. It pointed to an old, condemned neighborhood. They were all excited to go on this new adventure. They arrived, and there were guards at the front entrance. After talking to the guards, they were confirmed to be guests, and proceeded to park the car and head inside. There were a few other groups of people entering the main building at the same time. With everyone gathered, there was a major announcement from a man named Victor Bran. Hello everyone, Victor said. Welcome to the scariest haunted house you will ever find. As he was talking, there were footsteps and knocking sounds in the background. Everyone was looking around at the various noises, but Victor seemed to be oblivious to all the noises in the background. You are all here because you have been seeking out a haunted house. Well, this house is haunted, or something is really wrong with it. Here's the proposal. If you can last an hour in this house without exiting, you will win $100,000 each. Excited, everyone looked at each other and were happy with the additional benefit, but really they were just there for the scares. They all agreed, and Victor and his friends quickly exited their last words, good luck. The group of 15 people looked at each other and laughed at the situation. What a joke. As they were laughing, something fell in the other room. They all heard it and moved towards the noise. In the kitchen, there was a book that fell on the floor. Suddenly, all the cabinets opened, and knives and plates flew out of the drawers. Multiple knives hit different people. This was starting to get real. Shocked to see that this wasn't a joke, three contestants sprinted for the door, namely the ones with knives protruding from their skin. The chairs at the table flew in all directions, hitting another person. The chandelier fell to the ground as well, and shattered into pieces. Matt looked at Bethany. Do you want to get out of here? Bethany said, no. Let's just make sure we're not going to get hurt by something. The group got out of the kitchen, and were now in the living room. Objects in the living room were flying at them as well. Pictures flying off the walls. Lamps smashing into walls. When the couches came after them, they all quickly ran upstairs. They found a bedroom with not much in it. They grabbed all the loose items they could find and threw it out in the hallway. They closed the door and huddled up in a circle. As a group, they had determined that this is where they were going to stay for the next 50 minutes. Unfortunately, their plan was ruined by this crazy house. 20 minutes had passed by and they heard items slamming into walls and ceilings, glass breaking, and people screaming. They were terrified to leave this room at this point, but felt somewhat comfortable. They were all looking at each other and just wanted this to be over. Out of nowhere, Will started shaking violently and foaming at the mouth. They all jumped up and Will fell over. He was dead. Bethany cried as she ran to the door. However, she stopped in her tracks. They all saw a puddle on the ground that came under the door. When they opened the door, water started slowly coming in, which was from an overflowing sink. 
the water must have got to will, and the water must be electrified. With this new threat, Matt broke the window and they all went to the roof. They walked across the roof a little bit while looking for safe passage. Matt found another window and broke it. They were looking for an alternate way down the stairs to avoid the electrified puddle. They entered the next room and went to the door to open it. The curtains they passed by caught fire quickly and suddenly the room was ablaze. They all exited the room and were now in the hallway. Enough was enough, they thought. Keith, let's get the hell out of here. They went down the hallway as fast as possible, avoiding furniture and books slamming into the wall everywhere. Another room was on fire now. The bathroom sinks exploded and water was shooting all over the place. The windows all exploded as they were running towards the door, glass flying everywhere. There was a roaring sound like the sound of a freight train or a tornado. This was pure madness. They all finally got to the front door and ran through it. They made it about 10 steps out the door and all the chaotic noises suddenly stopped. In front of them was Victor with two of his guys. Victor said, you all didn't make it. You had 20 minutes left. No money for you, all right? But he just didn't understand. We didn't care about the money anymore. Bethany screamed at Victor. You heartless bastard. We just lost our friend Will in that house. Victor said, Who is Will? When you came, it was just you three. They were all confused. Was Victor crazy or lying? Bethany said, Will came with us, and you shook his hand. Don't tell me you don't remember him. Victor said, Honestly, I don't know what you're talking about. You have to understand that this house is actually haunted, and you acknowledged when you signed a waiver of liability. The house makes you see things that aren't there. When he said that, they all looked back at the house. There was no fire, flood, or broken glass. The house was in perfect condition. Bethany looked back and asked Victor, Where are all the other people that played the game? Victor, looking irritated, said, There are no other people. We brought you three here to do the challenge, and that's it. Now if you're ready, you can get out of here. They all got in the car and started driving away from the house, happy that they still had their lives. As they were leaving the area, Bethany looked back. She saw Will with hundreds of people behind him, staring at them driving away, with their white, ghostly glow contrasting with the dark very well. Haunted houses can be fun, but don't look for something too scary. It might be the scariest thing you ever did. A group of friends gathered around a table on Halloween night. The objective was to test if this magic cup was really real. Someone had found videos on TikTok of a group of teenagers that found a cup with mysterious powers. When they drank from the cup, according to the onlookers in the crowd, they would convulse, their eyes would turn black, and they would say and do really crazy things. Nothing too crazy, just things like cry, and tell funny stories about themselves, say crazy stuff, things like that. It was like a paranormal way to pull something out of you, and it was just so entertaining. So Brian tracked down the group that had the cup and got it. He saved it especially for this night, Halloween night. Everyone gathered around as Brian slowly pulled the cup from the box. It was a plain cup with ancient carvings on it, with some more recent Sharpie writings on top of the ancient carvings. The modern writing said, do not drink from this, the devil's chalice, and cursed. The teenagers read all of this and laughed. So dramatic, one of them said. Brian asked the crowd, who wants to go first? Kaylee said, I'll go. 
everyone looked at her with shock and laughter. She was the smallest person in the room, at 5'2 and 100 pounds, but she was the first to volunteer for this unexpected challenge. Haley asked what she had to do. Brian laid out the rules. He explained, First, you have to put alcohol in the cup. It doesn't matter what kind. Second, you need to prick your finger and add a drop of your own blood. She looked questionably at Brian, like, what did she just sign up for? He reassured her and said, just a small amount will do. Then he told her the most important thing. Third, you must say these words correctly or something can happen that is not good. The words were, Klaatu, Vrata, Niktu. He told her to practice, but she was insulted by the request. She could say three words, and correctly. He needed to lighten up and stop micromanaging her. This was supposed to be fun. As Kaylee started the ritual, everyone pulled out their phones to record the whole thing. She put vodka in a cup and swished it around, giving the cup a little sniff, as if to ensure the vodka was really in the cup. Vodka has a terrible alcohol smell, but there's something about it that is alluring. Next, Brian gave her a pen to prick her finger. She did, and placed a drop of her blood in the vodka-filled cup. Next was the words. She looked at Brian and said, Klaatu, Verata, Biktu. Extremely concerned, Brian ran straight to her and tried to stop her from taking the drink. She messed up the words, and that is not good. He was too late, though. Kaylee quickly slammed the drink and wiped her mouth. She looked up, though, and saw fire and flames everywhere. It was a terrifying display of a hellscape. She was no longer in the house, but in hell. There were creatures down here, too. Then she saw something that really concerned her. She saw a demonic presence approach her howling in her face. She panicked and picked up a sharp stick and stabbed the demon through the head. It fell to the ground. Then, multiple demons approached her from the left, howling with an unbearable sound. She used her stick to dispatch all the demons that were coming to attack her. With all the demons dead, she wandered around the hellscape to find a way out. Why did she agree to this? This was crazy. Suddenly, Two more demons approached her, but they were keeping their distance. These demons were different from the rest for some reason in the way they were behaving. They were howling, but they were holding guns and were pointing them right at her. Feeling like her life was in danger, she charged at them with her stick, but she didn't make it. She was gunned down by those demons and was dead. What really happened? was different than what was perceived. Haley was shot by police responding to a domestic disturbance. Back at the house where the ritual was performed, everyone except one person was dead. They all had suffered from knife wounds. After drinking from the cup, Haley had lost her mind and went on a murderous rampage. First, she killed Brian when he tried to stop her. Then everyone else got off the couch and tried to stop her. She took them all out. They thought that Kaylee was small and they could all stop her together, but they were wrong. In the chaos, one girl was able to sneak away and call the police. She survived, but the damage was already done. The cup had the ability to make people do funny and outlandish things, but the ritual had to be done right. If not, there were major consequences. They knew of the dangers and did it anyways. Ancient artifacts are nothing to mess with. Through its long life, an object could have something attached to it that you don't want to let out. It pointed to an old, condemned school. School? Matt broke the next window. Oh, wait. That they could enter into or something a group of friend a group of friends 
friends, a group of friends. The cup had the ability to make people do fully 